so our next topic is neuromuscular blockers right again the name itself is self explanatory it is muscle relaxation which is caused by the action of the drugs at the junction of the neuro and muscular right neurons and muscular where they meet the junction where it is where the drug acts right so therefore they are called as neuromuscular blockers right so what are they doing they are actually bringing about muscle relaxation right why is muscle relaxation needed remember our flow chart of the anesthesia right so when before inserting the endotracheal tube we usually go with muscle relaxation when we are instituting anesthesia right apart from that in anesthesia everything is polypharmacy right we do not go beyond a certain point with one drug but what do we do we add a plethora of the drugs to be given to the patient right they can be iv induction agents as we have already seen they can be inhalational anesthetics right along with that we also give muscle relaxation to bring about that pain that stage of anesthesia right so neuromuscular blockers as we say they are relaxing right they are relaxing for whom they are very relaxing for the surgeons right but for the anesthetics they are actually a class of drugs where we have to be on our toes why because when we give neuromuscular blockers the patient's ability to breathe the patient's ability to do any of the skeletal muscle activity actually goes off right so what happens in this case you are the person on whom the entire thing depends right right from ventilation of the patient to taking care of the patient and bringing back the patient again to the voluntary self efforts of ventilation right so it is relaxing for the surgeons which he demands but for anesthetics we have to like take care of the patient when the patient is under this neuromuscular blockers or muscle relaxants right so what are they how do we classify neuromuscular blockers right how do we classify them right broadly speaking they are classified as depolarizing and non depolarizing muscle relaxants right depolarizing and non depolarizing muscle relaxants right we are going to be looking into the details of the classification in a while but before that we have to understand what is depolarizing what is non depolarizing and how do they act first right first we have to understand the mechanism of action of neuromuscular blockers right so where do they act they act at the neuromuscular junction nmj that we call it right? they act at neuromuscular junction right now to understand their mechanism you need to first understand how a normal impulse is transmitted right as you can see here this is nothing but this is a nerve axon we can call it right so this is a nerve through which an impulse is being traversed right and this is a muscle fiber that we can see right so this is a muscle fiber and you can see this these are your neuromuscular junction unit right the motor unit that we call it this is entirely one motor unit right so what is happening here when the impulse travels from here right they go to this neuromuscular junction they again send the impulses so that this muscle then contracts right individual filaments all those contract in tandem right suppose i want to make a fist of this hand what will i do the impulse goes right they travels and then it goes towards the muscle and they get the information that now you have to contract right so it is a neuro transfer which goes via the neuromuscular junction and then the muscle reacts the muscle acts right so to bring about that what is happening see this is one this unit that i have magnified and showing to you in this figure on your right hand side right so this is what this is a neuromuscular junction we all have seen in the physiology right so whenever a action potential comes whenever a impulse comes what happens through this nerve terminal that is also known as axon there is the impulse which is traveling right now right so it comes to the nerve terminal then there are these units of or quantas of acetylcholine that we call it right so from the nerve terminal what happens this acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft right this is a neuromuscular junction and from that the nerve end terminal whenever the impulse come acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft right so these acetylcholine goes and binds to nicotinic cholinergic receptors these acetylcholine goes and binds to nicotinic 
cholinergic receptors right so which part of nicotinic cholinergic receptors alpha subunit alpha subunit right now this nicotinic cholinergic receptors have total in total have got five receptors two alpha beta gamma and delta right one beta one gamma one delta and two alpha so where does it bind it binds to alpha subunit of nicotinic cholinergic receptors what it binds acetylcholine comes and binds to these receptors so once it comes and binds to these receptors what happens there is this sodium channel which opens sodium potassium pump exchange takes place right and the action potential is propagated right and the action potential is propagated so you get a muscle contraction or whatever action you want right so this is our normal neuromuscular transmission happens right now what happens when we give the neuromuscular blocking drugs right let us start with depolarizing muscle relaxants right let us start with depolarizing muscle relaxant so what will happen when we give this neuromuscular blocking drugs right so we have injected those depolarizing muscle relaxants via intravascular route intravenously we have injected what is the example of depolarizing muscle relaxant best example is succinyl choline right that is what is the example the drug that we use for depolarizing muscle relaxant right so i'll mark it with a black pen in the triangular format like this right so this is your acetylcholine sorry this is your succinyl choline right so this succinyl choline when we give intravascularly it goes intravascularly and then it comes to its final point that is your neuromuscular junction right it enters the neuromuscular junction that is our primary target area right so once it enters this neuromuscular junction what happens it comes and binds to this nicotinic cholinergic receptors right it comes and binds to this nicotinic cholinergic receptors now what is succinyl choline succinyl choline is nothing but it is two molecules of acetylcholine combined what is succinyl choline it is two molecules of acetylcholine combined right so what was acetylcholine doing it as soon as it came into the neuromuscular junction what it does it brings about action potential and depolarization right so it is more or less structurally similar to acetylcholine but not exactly the same so once this succinyl choline comes and binds to this nicotinic cholinergic receptors right again same place it is coming and binding right nicotinic cholinergic receptors what it does it brings about a change in the receptors but here you will not get a complete action potential the way we were getting when acetylcholine is released right here what happens there is asynchronous contraction and relaxation of the muscles that is known as fasciculation right that is known as fasciculation right what do you mean by fasciculation it is asynchronous contraction and relaxation of the muscle group so if i want to make a fist i want all the muscles to contract in sync right but when i give succinyl choline they are causing some amount of contraction but it is asynchronous it is not a complete synchronous contraction therefore it is known as fasciculation that means the action potential is generated to an extent but it is asynchronous right so once this succinyl choline comes and binds to the nicotinic cholinergic receptors it brings about the fasciculation right it brings about fasciculation similar to that of acetylcholine but it is fasciculation that it was because it is asynchronous contraction now after this when it goes into the repolarization phase right after this when it goes into the repolarization phase that is when the muscle is completely relaxed that is when the muscle is completely relaxed right so again going back to the normal physiology that is here right when the action potential is propagated right with a normal physiology we are talking about right so acetylcholine when it is there in the neuromuscular junction that is the synaptic cleft that we are talking about right so acetylcholine comes here it attaches to the nicotinic cholinergic receptors what happens after that the acetylcholine is degraded this is a very quick action happening right now the acetylcholine is degraded by what enzyme is it degraded it is degraded with the help of enzyme acetyl choline esterase 
acetyl choline esterase so this is the enzyme acetyl choline esterase that helps in degradation of acetyl choline into acetyl and coenzyme a plus coenzyme a now this acetyl again goes back into the nerve terminal and is again used for formation of acetyl choline right so this is how the action is terminated right this is how the action is terminated in normal conditions and this is happening very quick very quick right but what happens when we are giving succinyl choline when we have given succinyl choline they have come they have attached to the same receptors at the same site where acetyl choline was attached and it is also structurally similar to acetyl choline so how are they degraded so succinyl choline is degraded right succinyl choline is degraded with the help of enzyme yes succinyl choline is degraded with the help of enzyme pseudo choline esterases right succinyl choline is degraded with the help of enzyme pseudo choline esterase right now you can call it pseudo choline esterase you can call it plasma choline esterase you can call it butyl choline esterase everything is one in the same right so succinyl choline is degraded with the help of enzyme pseudo choline esterase right but as acetyl choline it is degraded within milliseconds right succinyl choline after fasciculation when there is a phase of free polarization it takes a little longer time to degrade it takes a little longer time to degrade so that is the duration of action of your depolarizing muscle relaxant right so far clear all right